Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Spacing Out. I'm Jason McClellan. And I'm Marine Ellsbury. Thanks for joining us. It's been a busy couple of weeks for UFO-related news, so let's jump into it and talk about some of the stories that have made headlines recently. A team of British scientists believe they have found alien life in meteor shower debris they collected during the Perseid meteor shower. The samples were collected with a balloon that was sent into the stratosphere. Once in the stratosphere, sterile slides were exposed, capturing small biological organisms that the scientists believe could have only come from space. The team of scientists was led by astrobiologist Professor Chandra Wickramsinghe, who is credited as a co-developer of the theory of panspermia. This theory holds that life is abundant across the universe and the seeds of life are spread from planet to planet by meteors. The team from the University of Sheffield found microscopic algae and two unidentified complex microscopic biological organisms. Rick Ramsinga told the Daily Mail, biological entities of this nature have not previously been reported occurring in the stratosphere. Skeptics of the finding claim that these biological samples could have come from Earth and were somehow carried into the stratosphere. However, Wick Ramsinga says that the entities they found are too large in mass for that to be possible. The team's findings were presented last month at the Instruments, Methods, and Mission for Astrobiology Conference in San Diego. A UFO appeared over Lincoln, Nebraska on ABC affiliate KLKN's Tower Cam on the morning of Wednesday, September 4th. The station's morning meteorologist, Sean McMullen, noticed the object just before 6 a.m. He explains, I have never seen anything like this before. I even say that several times while I'm on the air describing the object because I want to let people know even I don't know what this is so I can't exactly tell you what it is. The flashing triangle or teardrop shaped object in the video appears to hover motionless in the sky. According to McMullen, the UFO was visible for about 45 minutes but disappeared from view when the sun rose. McMullen said the object looked almost like a weather balloon but points out that weather balloons are not equipped with flashing lights. Local resident Rich Webb who is a member of the Mutual UFO Network, or MUFON, told KLKN, it's an unidentified object. We don't know if it was flying, floating, what it is. We have also informed the station that this same UFO was possibly seen a couple hours earlier that morning, 200 miles southeast of Lincoln in Lee's Summit, Missouri. KLKN contacted the FAA, but officials say nothing out of the ordinary was reported on the morning in question. The station also spoke with University of Nebraska Lincoln physics professor Timothy Gay, who says he can guarantee the non existence of extraterrestrials and suspects the tower cam footage was a government aircraft of some sort, or perhaps an odd lens reflection. His unfounded claim about the non-existence of extraterrestrial life aside, Gay is correct in suggesting that secret government aircraft should be considered when attempting to identify an unknown aerial object. And although odd lens reflections are responsible for a fair number of UFO captured on photo and video, that's unlikely in this case as it was potentially observed by an other witness in a different location. KLKN continues to investigate this UFO mystery. A game maker is seeking funding for a new board game titled UFO Hunter. The game's creator, Mark Haney, launched a fundraising campaign on Tuesday, September 10th, utilizing the crowdfunding website Kickstarter. According to the game's description, in the board game UFO Hunter, each player travels across the globe looking for tangible extraterrestrial evidence. In order to beat the competition to this acclaim, players must carefully choose the best time to travel, buy just the right equipment, conduct the proper research, and publish rumors of new sightings. Rumors may turn out to be nothing, or even a trap set by government or private individuals. Even exposing hoaxes can be beneficial to leading you to the truth and ultimately to victory. Hanny is a veteran board game designer who has designed games for more than 20 years. He describes, I make games that I would want to play and that I myself find entertaining and challenging. I'm really in it for the fun because games should be fun. And the social aspect of board games makes each one an event. There's nothing I enjoy more than seeing that spark of enjoyment and to have another gamer say, wow, this is really cool. UFO Hunter has already been developed and designed and is ready for production. Supporters who pledge more than a certain dollar amount will receive a copy of the game when it's produced. And according to the Kickstarter's page, the game's estimated delivery is December 2013. A woman photographed a UFO over Minnesota on Monday, September 2nd. Science teacher Allison Barta and her friend Neil Patterson were outside her home in Cass Lake, Minnesota, taking pictures of pelicans when they noticed a translucent disc-shaped object in the sky. 
The Grand Forks Herald describes that this UFO spanned the horizon in just a few seconds at an incredible speed. The photo Barta took shows the mysterious object and two pelicans in flight. Although the UFO resembles simple lens flare, she explains, it's definitely not a lens flare because we saw it with the naked eye. The pelicans appear more in focus than the disc-shaped object, suggesting the UFO was closer to the camera than the pelicans were. Barta recalls, for the moment, we were pretty dumbfounded. The two of us are watching it zoom across the sky, and I'm trying to get another picture of it, but I couldn't catch it. She explains, it's not an aircraft known to this planet. I don't really know what it is. I know what it is. What is it? It's a ghost flying saucer. That does look like a ghost flying <laughs> that's saucer, all I doesn't can explain. it? Yeah, so in this instance, yeah, when you look at it, it does look like lens flare. I mean, we yeah. see this in a lot of photos, but if we take the witness at her word, saying that they actually observed it with their eyes in the sky, then it's pretty fascinating. It would be nice to have that quote from the other witness as well. Yeah, corroborating evidence, sure. I mean, basically, you have this see-through little cloud-like round ball shooting across the sky. I don't know. Right, and it's not in focus like the pelicans are, mm -hmm. so we really get no detail from it, except this disc-shaped kind of translucent thing flying through the sky. So it's an interesting photo, but we've really got nothing else to, to go on but that. So, but this Lincoln Tower cam footage is fascinating to me, and they still don't know what this thing is. It was on TV, on live TV during the broadcast, and you know, a lot of times when this happens on the tower cam footage, the meteorologists are the first ones to jump in and say, mm -hmm. oh, well, yeah, that's obviously this. This meteorologist was extremely interested from the get-go and said, I've never seen anything like that. It's a, it's a really strange object. And, you know, there's a few things that would suggest, you know, him to think, it, oh, maybe it's a weather balloon or some sort of um, other strange balloon. But it's flashing all these weird lights so and it's such a strange time of night as well it's like sunrise basically yeah sunrise so it's not really being affected by the sun yet and we're seeing lots of different colors changing mm -hmm. colors you know that happens a lot in the day daylight because of the sun you'll see things looking like they're changing color but it's just an effect of the sun but this is in the dark sky changing colors and you know somebody saw it 200 miles away too so we don't know if that was the same object, but it's pretty fascinating. Right. I think that we should take the time frame from when that object was reported to MUFON and sort of scan how fast this might have been moving because it was shown on the tower cam for 45 minutes. That's a long time to be slowly hovering there. Right. So I think there's still a lot more details that need to come out on the story, but it's interesting at this point in time. I'm surprised we haven't had Project Luna taking responsibility for this one as well, well so far. Well, if they follow suit, they'll wait uh, half a year or whatever yeah. they did to come out and say it. But uh, well, ho hopefully the station will continue to investigate. They did uh, at least one other follow-up story to it. So hopefully they stay on it and maybe we'll find out what it was. But I don't think they will. It's an unidentified object and it's pretty fascinating. So what actually pisses me off the most about this story is Professor Gay's asinine oh. comment about the fact that he can prove without a doubt that there is absolutely no extraterrestrial life in existence. That wins the award for the stupidest comment I've heard in a long time. That just frustrated me to no end. Hardly scientific. A bonehead. I have nothing more to say <laughs> about that guy. Well, that's all for this episode of Spacing Out. Be sure to visit openminds.tv for all the latest news. And if you're a podcast listener, go to openminds.tv slash radio and check out Open Minds UFO Radio. Make sure to click on the like button if you enjoyed today's show, and remember to subscribe to our channel so you know when we post new content. Thanks again for joining us today. I'm Maureen Ellsbury. And I'm Jason McClellan. We will see you in the future. If you have a UFO sighting or something you would like to report to Open Minds, you can go to our website at openminds.tv and click the contact button to send us your request. Or you can email us at contact at openminds.tv. You can also call us at 1-877-UFO-0110. That's 1-877-836-0110.